Welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays, or Fridays. It's your source of animal rights news and gossip, all packed into a short, sweet three minutes on everyone's favorite day, which of course is a Thursday, but it's a Friday, I don't know. It, but anyway, it's it's hard to imagine I might only be talking about victories on this very special Friday episode, but with all this winning, like, how can I not? And just for the record, it's a special episode because it's on a Friday, because I was I was too lazy to, to like get my shit together to actually do this yesterday, so apologies. Anyways, let's not just talk about fur. But also let's talk about how this can apply to other issues like factory farming, vegan outreach, and, and address that endless complaint of, but this only applies to fur. So, as you can see right here on my Certain Days 2021 Freedom for Political Prisoners calendar that it is the month of December, and that means only one thing, that in less than one month I'll be replacing that one with this one the Certain Days 2022 Freedom for Political Prisoners calendar, which of course is out now. So so do you need something that not only tells you what day it is, but what radical history happened on that day, all the while supporting political prisoners at the same time? Well, surprisingly, uh, this, this calendar is for you. So head over to Burning Books, uh, the link's down below, and grab one or 10 of these um, and enjoy. You're welcome. So let's start in Brookline, Massachusetts, where the city of 60,000 people banned the sale of new fur products. The two things that I love about this ban is that it was overwhelmingly voted for, like coming in with 75% of the vote in favor of the ban. And second, that it was driven by a 15-year-old high school sophomore named Ezra. Now, I don't know what you were doing when, when you were a sophomore in high school, but me, I was like skipping JV soccer practice to bum rides off of the older kids to go to hardcore shows. But this kid is like drafting motions to ban the sale of fur and found town meeting members to become co-petitioners and collected signatures and spoke at hearings and town meetings and effectively like got this ban passed, which is fantastic. Nice job. This, I believe, is like the third town in Massachusetts to ban the sale of fur and, and it's really helped continue to steamroll the Fur Free Massachusetts Initiative Ford. But what about wool? And what about leather? I hear your complaint. Uh, let me get to that after I finish this other fur news. Elle Magazine, which is a giant in the fashion industry, announced that they are hailing a fur free future and in a move to support animal welfare and reflect changing tastes, the publication is banning uh, fur from the pages of all its international editions. All of Elle's 45 global editions signed onto a charter to ban editorial content promoting fur on its printed pages uh, and its online and social media sites. And maybe this doesn't seem like a big deal to you, but Elle has 69 million readers, and that makes it the world's largest fashion magazine. So, so when I talk about pressure campaigns ad nauseum in the past, and I'm sure you're sick of it, but I often refer to the five points of intervention, the five places we should try and disrupt in order to be successful in our campaigns. So there are the five points of intervention, production, destruction, consumption, decision, and assumption. This particular disruption to the fur industry takes place in that difficult to reach point five, the point of assumption. This point is often described as, as the quote, building blocks of ideology. It's where beliefs and politics and values uh, live and grow. It's also a point that people don't like challenged. And I, as anyone that's done educational outreach on the streets knows that's generally the case. It's a point where one's ideas and cultures and society might be pushed back on or even upended, right? And, and that's that change is difficult for people. But it's also about like reframing a narrative. So maybe challenging assumptions isn't just done in the form of educating people about diet or animal suffering, but like undoing those deep-seated assumptions that are ingrained in people by corporations, by advertising by marketing so it's, it's like a hard thing to disrupt really well right but but i think this actually does it and if you don't know about the five points of intervention i would highly recommend going to check this video out that i made about it i think it's an important thing to think about when we start and proceed with our pressure campaigns now we often hear that age-old complaint right that these bands and campaigns only cover fur. What about the leather? What about the wool? Well, I know you don't want to hear about steps, but this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And we need to realize this isn't going to happen overnight. But it will happen. And, and Armani is an example of that. Armani, another fashion giant, announced recently that they would no longer be selling products made of Angora wool. So Angora wool is like the hair that is torn from Angora rabbits and turned into textiles and clothing. And... But while this is significant and important, I would also add it's an important step forward. This is what it looks like to make an ask, win that fight, and then move those goalposts. 
What I mean by that is that activists had been pressuring Armani to get them to go for free, which they succeeded in doing in 2016. But then those goalposts were moved and activists started to pressure them to do away with other animal skins and fur, this time Angola wool. And, and again, it, it worked. Like when you get the big names to start making change, the smaller retails eventually want to live up to their competitor standards. They don't want to remain in the back of the pack. So they go for a free or they do away with Angora wool. They try to play catch up with these leaders. And that's kind of how these long-term pressure campaigns work. We often say, well, it's just about fur. It's just about wool. It's just about love. No, it's, it's about taking these corporations along for the ride, getting them to do what we want, moving those goalposts and getting them to do what we want again and again and again until we've reached all of our goals. Like in this case, getting rid of the use of animals in the clothing industry. It's a long process, like I said, which I think is a, a lot of activists rooted in a more liberatory framework don't have the patience for it. And I get that, but this is what it looks like to take successful steps forward, to not only do away with fur, but with other animal skins and hair used in fashion, and, and to finally put this issue to bed. But what does this look like outside of the clothing industry? You know, we often hear, well, this is the fur industry is small compared to these bigger industries like animal ag. But when it applied to a much bigger industry like animal ag, it is a much harder fight, but it still can be done. Like look at Animal Justice Project in the UK. They've been doing this for, for a couple years now. They're, they're using their undercover investigations to highlight the abuse and use of animals on farms. They're using what they find to not only do vegan outreach and education with and, and aid that uh, pursuit, they're using it to push forward pressure campaigns to attack various arms of the industry, taking those steps to move not just the conversation forward, but the industry forward and, and hopefully over a cliff. They strategically pick various farms to go after, like the current campaign against the Bath Soft Cheese Company, which the general public knew as like this organic dairy and handmade artisan cheese producer where I'm sure the cows were having a beautiful time in the fields and just you know, grazing and enjoying themselves to their life's extent. But after the undercover investigation came out and went all over the media, they are now seen as the company that is kicking, slapping, punching, and yelling at cows. Using their pressure, they're starting to convince companies like this organic grocery delivery service, Abel and Cole, to drop soft cheese company. And if we want to go back to those five points of intervention, they're, they're hitting a few or almost all of them at, at the point of decision, point of consumption, the point of production, and the point of destruction. Like the more you can hit, the more success you'll see. And I think Animal Justice Project is a great example of that. We can use smart strategic campaigns that might seem too narrow focused for some animal rights activists or having too many steps to reach our goal, but we can use them successfully against big industries with long-term goals in mind. We can reach those goals by being strategic, by being vigilant, by reaching those goalposts and then moving them and then re-engaging. And of course, if we all keep fighting.